I once steered a ship through six meters high waves in the East African Sea. It was like watching a wall build that would break over you. You couldn't see anything. I was not afraid. Starting my own company, I was scared to the core. I was scared for so many reasons, but the main one being that I wanted to start a company and realize a business opportunity, solve a problem that lay entirely out of my own context. I wanted to build an inclusive fintech in East Africa. I wanted to build a way to, at scale, solve financial inclusion. Only history will tell us whether we succeeded or failed. But at this point in time, with more than a half million users in our platform, I'll tell you the secret to how we got it right and the answer to, to the question, how did we get here? As is so often the, the, the case, the answer was in the problem. My fear was to engage in a context that was not my own. And this led me to that for every stake our company has taken, I always engage, we always engage with our end users. And our end users always have the answers. One thing I was always fascinated by in East Africa was this concept of community. And our users have shown me that community is the thing that is, is the sum that is so much greater than the parts that it uh, is. In fact, I believe that inclusive fintech in Africa can be achieved with and through traditional community groups. Traditional community groups are a rich source of guidance and inspirations as to how we should be designing inclusive fintech. If you take the traditional community groups, SACOs, small cooperatives, RASCAs, burials associations, and so forth, they provide local communities with everything from the opportunity to save up in a secure manner, to access to loans, credit, um, even pension and insurance products. They come in so many... And this is because these groups were actually there first. The cooperatives are what grew in to become the banks, to become the insurance companies. And for this reason, these groups exist across the world because they are the natural solution to managing your finance. The natural solution is to depend on your community. So we should pay attention. We should be inspired by them in our design of inclusive finance, and we should leverage them as part of the solution. Let me give you three examples. First example, traditional community groups are more innovative than established financial institutions. In Ethiopia, where Jami One operates, more than 40 million people are organized in burial societies. This is a concept where you will pay money on a monthly basis, and when a member dies, the community will pay for your burial. However, many of these groups will allow members that get very ill to take a loan. Basically, they will receive the, payout, the claims payout before the event takes place, as a loan. Now, if the member survives the disease, they can repay this loan and become a member again of this insurance scheme. This is an incredibly, incredible display of the concept of resourcefulness, of making the most out of limited resources. And I believe that this should be a, dis a principle in how we design inclusive finance, the principle of resourcefulness. Second example. In the very first community group where I sat in on was the savings group. Now, this is a type of group where people will come together on a weekly basis, contribute a bit of money, and this way have access to small loans and to secure their savings. Now, in this group, I noticed that in the back of the room, an elderly lady was sitting. And when time came for everyone to make the financial contribution, she didn't make a financial contribution. This is a concept that I have now seen in so many types of groups across the board. It may be a situation where this elderly person has contributed for a long time and is no longer expected to do so, so it becomes a type of a pension. 
It may also be that the group selects a member of the community that does not have the financial capacity to be part of the community group, and they cover her to support her family. This concept is, of course, the concept of solidarity. And to me, it tells us that if we want to create truly for inclusive finance in emerging markets, what we need to do is to allow for sometimes everyone to pay just a little bit more so that those that would have otherwise been excluded can become part of the model. We call this the principle of solidarity. Third example. Traditional community groups are a strong source of analog infrastructure for data collection, for payment infrastructure, and so forth. And in Jami One, this has allowed us, we, um, these structures have allowed us to make financial uh, inclusion even more inclusive. So in Ethiopia, an insurance must be paid a full year upfront. Now, this is exclusive to many people that cannot afford to pay the insurance a full year upfront. However, over time, a system has developed where these groups use their existing capital to pay for members upfront and then afterwards collect payments on a monthly basis from members when they can afford to pay. This is an incredible flexible system because the group knows their members and understand if a member does, isn't able to pay just this month, maybe it may create an extension of credit or even allow a member to skip a payment because they're part of the community group or hold them accountable to repay for months that they didn't pay. This is a rich source uh, a rich system that we can leverage in building inclusive finance. I think we're... Okay. <laughs> um, and we call this the principle of leveraging community structures. I believe that inclusive finance can be designed based on inspiration from community groups, their resourcefulness, their solidarity, and designed in a way that leverages these community groups' structure of analog infrastructure for payments collection, their reach into community. And that this way, we can build a concept. We can build on a concept that is so vital in society. A whole that is greater than the sum of the parts. So getting back to that question, what allowed us to get where we are today? The answer is, of course, community. My name is Charlotte. I'm CEO and co-founder of Jami One. Jami means community. Thank you for your time.